And with this um, data suggesting also from, from the PET imaging that there is um, quite something going on in the heart, we uh, approached uh, cardiophysiologists uh, from the Podesta at the American University of Vienna. And we did a lot of experiments. Again, it's not so high school, unfortunately. It's very tedious. We work on the pumping heart and whatnot. But what we basically could uh, show is that there's quite some evidence that this autonomous immediate lethality has something to do with cardiac dysfunction. We see this most pronounced in left ventricular end vessel pressure, which is increased, and also here a tendency uh, of a reduction of left ventricular systolic pressure. We also see a reduction of energy content. So uh, here it's a combination of AD, ADP, and ATP. There's a reduction in the heart in those mice that have received a which in a way could interpret that maybe the heart has just run out of energy. Something we haven't proved yet, also the atomic cell treatment works systemically, so we can at this stage not yet really conclude that the mice die because of heart failure. Um, we do have evidence that we don't think it's a classical immune mediated cytotoxicity, there's not really cell death happening in the heart so much. Uh, we think it has something to do with the energy. And we then again went back uh, to PET imaging. And we tried to ask the question, what happens to glucose uh, when you block fat acid oxidation? And to highlight, um, so what you see basically is, um, this is actually G uh, tracing, then and, and the purple uh, symbols here would be atomic cell treated mice, all of them infected. And you can see there's no increase um, um, on infection in spleen. So what we've seen before, that somehow the spleen would require more glucose upon infection, that is, um, gone in this case, and why would it be? We don't know, but what is just, I think, very interesting at the same time, the heart is not quite excessively uh, feeding on glucose. What well, this means that the heart is taking away now the glucose, and, and this makes it more difficult for the spleen um, to get it. We don't know. I should also say we very much would like to characterize further the effects of this fat acid oxidation okay, uh, on the immune system, but at the moment our time is five hours. We're trying to down titrate uh, the drug. We're hoping that the genetic models will allow us to measure what's happening on the immune side. Because our hypothesis would be that if you block fat acid oxidation, you force, as we see here, the heart to consume uh, more glucose. So you would think that maybe the immune response somehow has some detrimental uh, consequences to bear. We have to see that. Um, We've done more transcription analysis of the heart. Um, there's a lot of inflammatory stuff going on, cytokines, and we also saw a lot of signs for adaptive immune-related um, infiltrations. And with this, and also with our previous study, suggesting that CATs are still an important role in cataxia, we asked the question, what happens if we uh, remove the entire adaptive system, immune system, or just part of it? And this is summarized here. Um, you see in the top row, we are infecting mice that lack P and T cells, these are rat 2 deficient mice, and at the bottom uh, row we see um, a ablation experiment where we would get rid of CD T cells by injecting an NTSC antibody. And by and large, I think you can appreciate that we can reverse the changes we would see in glucose. Uh, otherwise, so a drop of glucose and an increase of ketone bodies in wildlife mice, but if you don't have T and T cells or if you just have no CDs, um, this is not happening. Suggesting that the T cells are required, whether they're driving this process and how active, I think we have to see. Also on a transcription level, it basically all falls in place again in the heart tissue that if you get rid of the T cells, this transcription of reprogramming of metabolic pathways in the heart is not happening. And um, so we again went back to PET imaging, now having mice that either by wild type or had received an isotype antibody or had been ablated by an NTCD8 antibody so that there are no CD8 T cells left. And what you can see nicely is that in this case, there's no increase uh, of glucose uptake in the spleen, and at the same time, the heart is again uh, showing much more glucose uptake. And on the other side, that ACT uh, ACT tracing, the spleen again doesn't seem to care much about uh, the uptake of absorption of that ACT. Whereas the heart now apparently doesn't feel this pressure of switching to the uptake of fatty acid oxidation. And I think most importantly is that um, this atomic mediated lethality that I showed you before is completely dependent 
and on the presence of the T-cells. So we can rescue this very harsh phenotype when the mice drop dead after five hours by just simply removing the CD. Yes, yeah, so with this I'd, I'd like to summarize um, that what we think we see here is a critical energy trade-off uh, across organs. In our case, we use viral infections. I'm very, well, I think it's very likely that in a different disease context, there will be different organs involved, there might be different immune cells involved. I think it's really meant as a proof of concept uh, to visualize and then to further dissect the communication and cross talk between organs. Um, we see this interesting um, relation between lymphatic organs and the heart in our model. We can show that if we disrupt that acid oxidation pharmacologically, that this kills the mice, and we think it is due to interfering with this organ trade-off. And um, yes, we show that it's a uh, CD8 uh, that seems to be required at least for many of the these processes. Many of the questions we're doing at the moment metabolic rescue experiments to see what happens if you inject glucose into those mice, what happens if you come with ketone body lipids. That is partially also a technical challenge, but you need to make sure that you um, deliver and use up the right amount. Um, I think a big question for us is um, that makes us uh, sleep less is what's the cause of the fatality? Why do the mice die? Uh, at this stage, we cannot really prove that it's the heart, although we think there is a, quite a chance that this is the case. And then the question would be how and what is happening uh, in the heart. And also, another thing is. Um, how would these, this crosstalk between organs, uh, by which means of communication uh, would this be steered? Is it cytokines, visual cytokines? Is it what cytokines that are being uh, secreted by T cells? Is it some other players involved? Um, we have little clue about that yet. And with this, uh, that's my last slide as a take home message. Um, I hope I could add more evidence to what probably Crystal thought yesterday and some others that are ready that the immune system is not just your classic immune organs, but it's much more. Um, and what I really think is that if we can better understand how the body manages its energy sources, these are limited uh, resources at the end of the day, that this could also be used mechanistically to exploit uh, uh, this for better immune therapies against inflammatory diseases, but also, of course, against infectiality. And with this, I would like to thank everyone who was involved in this study, Laura foremost, uh, but also Cecil and big team in, in Marcus' art department, also the cardiologists around Attila Kiesel and Kurt Oderson, many other corporation partners, funding agencies and